So this originally began with me being focused on the statue in the beginning of Fighting Gold and had developed into this theory that I'll be sure to go over at the end of it all. But I realized that this statue alone notes for a video. Information on the statue itself and an interpretation I'm going to mention goes to my friend Tails, and you should follow her at Tales of Color. The statue itself is not David like many believe, but instead an amalgamation of the Michelangelo slaves and the cover of Ryan James Dio's album, Holy Diver. When I came to this conclusion, I'm going to be honest with you, I was relatively late because both Tails and Medi had figured this out earlier, so now it's just about the meaning of the statues itself, what could the amalgamation be and what areas it takes from, and what does it stand for. For now, I'll be referring to the statue here in the opening, and later I'll be approaching what should be the end of it all. Starting this off here at the legs, we'll be connecting this to the young slave and the dying slave. The young slave was one of emergence, freeing itself from the stone that it's bound to. It's the reason that we see the knee further out and extremely defined while still bound, pushing itself forward while still being held by the back. Then there's the dying slave, but don't take the definition too literal. The statue itself doesn't portray a person that's dying, but instead someone of a deep sleep. Which would make it not a dying slave, but a sleeping slave. You see the, see this is a, it's not a Jojo reference, it's a sculpture reference, yeah. Contrasting the many other statues, because this is a slave that isn't bound by the stone itself, but in actuality the body. The need to wake up from the prison that it's kept in, because this soul is one that wants to be free. Now at the chest, I actually believe that this is the awakening slave. A powerful sculpture that looks like it's trying to just rip itself right out of the marvel and you can feel the life and pain from it and in this case there is so much energy being given because of how it emerges and how you only see the chest really. On the face and arms of it, I feel like this is a take on the dying slave and rebellious slave. The dying being the sleeping slave and the rebellious being one that's nearing out but is still strongly bound to the stone. The statue in question looks like it's being nearing awakened but it's still fighting against the chains of fate so it can't really escape because it's a known fact that you can't escape from crossing fate now on what this statue in specific represents. I think that the statue represents a slave fighting to be awake but is bound by the chains of fate and the weight of the sleep itself that keeps it inside of the body. The chains themselves aren't the ones being manipulated by the statue but are instead the ones manipulating the statue at hand. You see this and now it connects over to the stand arrow right after the statue. I feel like this sculpture is not only a representation of Giorno through part 5, but a representation of the group. And once Giorno emerges from this statue, it's because he's the one sleeping slave to wake up from being bound to this body. I believe that once the statue fully turns into Giorno, the chains won't wrap around the same way exactly, but instead in the way that it's done on the Holy Diver album cover, to where he's now the one wielding the chains of fate instead of being bound to them. And instead of a face that looks like it's fighting to stay awake and straining itself trying to pull itself away from fate, we're going to see Giorno in a confident smile taking control of his life like on the volume 62 cover. There's also a factor of Atlas, and I believe that it lays in the sleeping slave interpretation because he's fighting to wake up from just nearing bearing the weight of this world because it's a body bound to this earth when it's your soul trying to escape. So then we'll see Journal holding the earth like volume 62 because he's now strong enough to break past the sleep of the dying slave which leaves his soul as strong as Atlas. But that's just my take on it. There are many ways to interpret it, and I don't think that we're going to hear a direct way on like how it's actually supposed to be uh, interpreted, because usually art is left up to the beholder, and then the artists don't really come out of the woodwork explaining it. So everyone is free to think on what they believe for it. I mean, honestly, just yeah, sure. If you want to say, oh yeah, Speedwagon's gonna be the the actual sculpture, I'm like, yeah, sure, dude. Okay, <laughs> um, you can leave your thoughts on what you think about it. I'd love to see, but yeah. Thank you all for watching. I know you all expect me to talk about Black Sabbath since I had mentioned about doing a video on a previous video or you know, Twitter, Instagram and all that. But I'll actually be talking about Black Sabbath and Pulpo when episode four comes out. So like if you enjoyed and subscribe to stay updated. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. So until then, peace out and Godspeed.